Right, hi guys, welcome back to Kit Car Direct and MK Sports Cars. Here yeah, the weekend has rolled in again. First week of February rolling by. Snow coming apparently this weekend as well. Looking forward to that. Not going to take one of these out. Won't be much fun in that, but you know. What we have got though is a couple of engines here. So I'm going to kick off this week, because we did the other week the F20C versus the K20A. So I thought, well, okay, let's change things up again this week. So we've got a couple of bike engines here for you. What we got here? Well, this is a 2008 Gen 2 um, Hayabusa. So it's the 1340. Um, we're going to be detailing that and sorting out that's going to go into a car actually in a, in a building about a month or so's time. You see that evolve. So we've got that. We've also got here uh, a little R1 5V way. So it's an 06 era um, engine. Big difference um, in performance, obviously, in terms of brake horsepower and torque that they deliver. But I thought what would be also interesting is to see how much they weigh. So we've got a little setup here on the corner eight scales. Both of them on the scales. Before I tell you the numbers, have a guess on this one. Busa, in your mentally, have a look. And the R1. And I'm going to reveal the numbers. So what have we got? And I'm not going to lie because Cameron's man can zoom in in a second on this. I've got a helper, not a tripod this week, even better. So what have we got? 68.3 for the R1 and 87.5 for the Busa. So, but realistically, this hasn't got the throttle bodies on here at the moment. So, all right, I'm going to add a couple of kilos on at that. At, say that 70 kilos. So it's about 17 kilos heavier as an engine, uh, the Busa, roughly. And you're talking a 200 horsepower engine and a hundred and about 113, I think. Uh, foot pounds of torque spec wise versus I think the R1 is about 175, 180 and about 80 foot pounds of torque. So a big difference in terms of what they both deliver. This will bash your head in and this will scream your head in <laughs> basically. So yeah, there's a big difference in what they do and how they perform. But I thought it'd be really interesting to see the sort of weight difference. And everybody always asks, I'm up to say weight. A CBR is very similar in weights to this as well, sort of 65, 60, 70 kilos. Most of the thousands come out around then because they're quite tightly packaged. You can see the massive difference in size, really, in the engine. If you actually have a top view from an R1 to a, a Busa, quite a big difference. And when you get them in the engine bay, you can physically see it. This is easy to pick up. I can comfortably pick the ups. This one, I'm kind of might need a bit more of a workout and a bowl of porridge in the morning. But uh, big difference in the two. Before I just run you through the S2000 build where we've uh, on the Indy Classic that we've gone through this week. A few little changes this week. Um, obvious ones. Um, bulkhead panel has been put in. Uh, we've drilled and that's been rivnutted, ready to go. Header tank, OEP one in there. That's all plumbed in as well. We've got the last plumbing to do down to the uh, bottom hose which goes around this side actually and fills up on the back. Stephen Collins has been made also this week. He said it's our sort of um, one piece top column. The bottom column is collapsible on this as well and then we've got a nice uh, quick release um, race tech boss on there. Clock that on. Um, as well for the freehold steering wheel. So that's got to go in and that goes in with the bearings which I showed you the other week. We've got bearings that go through from here and here. We've got the uh, Brake fluid reservoirs put in, clutch fluid reservoirs put in, got the two caps which will go into this plug for the low level warning indicators to come in. Big obvious one, exhaust manifold is in, that's been made, fabricated and made and put in this week and we've just got to then do the side panel. Cut as well. Um, onto the dashboard, dashboard has gone in, it's a GRP dashboard on this one. Um, you see the centre hole has been done for the column as well, so the one piece column going through. DD2 light's gone in, ignition's gone in, and then we'll start on pop shaft, which is like last week. We do the centre tunnel as well. Um, so, yeah, scuttle's been mounted, adjusted, etc. accordingly as well. And then the front, well, we did actually mock up the bonnet on this as well. It's got the one piece, uh, the new SX style scoop to go on this as well. But, yeah, manifolds in, a few little touches to do, and the bits and bobs that we've been doing. Not the exciting stuff behind the scenes, tying up some of the wiring, bits and bobs that are under here, etc. But, yeah. It's quite long, things like the horn, you know, not very exciting stuff, but it's in as well, connects up the fans, a few bits and bobs that we've done as well. So yeah, that's it on the S2000 this week, and we'll crack on and move over to the R1 car. Okay, so we're over at the R1 RX5 MC, so the motorcycle engine derived Mazda-based car that we do. Um, so we stuck it on the scours. We've done the engines over there, and we thought, okay, well, we know what the boost has come out yet, generally, 520 kilos they roll in out um so 
I kind of looking at about, ooh, it's a just, un, it's about four, just under the 400 brake horsepower per ton. If you do the calcs and it's about 394, 395, I think, I do believe. Brake horsepower per ton. So we stuck this on the scales. Now we haven't put it all together completely, but we put the nose cone on, we put the bonnet on, we've got the front carbon wings, got the headlights on, the front wheels on, the rear wheels on. And in the cabin here, we've put the exhaust, the silencer, the harnesses, the header tank, the wing stay the pipe work, the paddle shift, the steering wheel, everything's sort of in the car. There's a few bits to go in, tiny things, even the gauges are in here. Put it all in there and we've just got fluids to add, really. Um, and the wheels and tyres will change from these because we're going to a smaller CXR, um, six inch all round with 185s rather than the 205. So there's a little bit here of adjustment to do in terms of some fluids in there, which is oil and water, basically. That is it. And she comes in at 442 kilos. We're pretty happy with that. We were trying to get around the 440 kilos. I think by the time we've done fluids, she's gonna to touch 450. Just about 450, I think, once we've put the uh, water and oil. Because all the bulkheads in under here, everything's all in there, the wiring, the whole, whole shebang. That's including, guys, electric reverse motor in there as well, all the cabling in, all the switches, etc. So that's all in as well. So wing mirrors. That sort of IVA spec, all the trim on the seats, which weighs weight. So I'm kind of rolling in at 450. Now that works out in my mind about, uh, what is it, 180 horsepower, about four, just over the 400, 400 404 brake horsepower per tonne, if I remember rightly. And it's about 177 foot pounds of torque per tonne. And a f what was the uh, boost up? Was it 217, wasn't it? 217 foot pounds of torque per ton so it's got a little bit more talk but we know that it's the extra cc's but i think they're going to be close being that's so light i think that's going to be close i think it'll be you know same driver in the same car i think they're going to be very competitive um doing it in two different ways a bit more grunt a bit more horsepower a bit more torque versus somewhere in a region of 70 kilos lighter in terms of the vehicle here um so overall weight wise so that gives you an indication but obviously the big difference here is that power plant there is about two grand, whereas a booster, by the time you dry sump and do everything else, you know, you're knocking on the thick end of realistically five and a half, six grand. So bang for buck, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good place to be with the MC, being the Mazda base kit, the budget wise is much, much cheaper. Or if you threw a CBR thousand in, in there as well. Very, very similar. I know the CBRs make it a little bit more horsepower, so about 190, 192 horsepower um, and engine weight's about the same. I mean, we've done a CBR demo car before with that engine in. So that's a cracking little package that will be to put together, uh, give you a little bit more horsepower. And they make about 92 foot pound of torque as well, rather than the 80 of the R1. So big difference there. We love, we, you know, big fan of the CBR engines as well. So yeah, that gives you an indication. I thought I'd show you something different. So the K20A F20C that we did last week, booster versus R1. And we'll probably slap a CBR on the scales at some point and see exactly what it what it looks like as well, give you an indication what it is. But 450 kilos, got to say, guys, pretty light car. Um, yes, we haven't got a big roll cage on it or nothing like that, and it would add to the weight if you're putting a big roll cage in. But 450 kilos, I think that comes out pretty light, and we're pretty happy in there. And that's no extra lightweight GRP on. I think that's a standard bodywork. Yeah, we've got a carbon rear wing, and we've got a carbon front wing on. But, you know, people do that as well as, as a standard package. And this hasn't been lightened. This is our full spec GRP that we do as well. It's not extra light or made thinner. And that's the SX scoop. So it's got a bigger bonnet scoop on there as well. So, And it's got an airbox. No air filter. That's got an airbox, which is probably two to three kilos heavier as well overall. So there you go. It's giving you an indication. Booster versus R1. Bang for buck. You're probably going to go down that route. That's going to be the cheapest brake horsepower. 400 horsepower per ton that you're going to ever do compared to the booster. So that's it, guys. That's kind of a snapshot for this week. Um, we've probably got some other announcements we're going to throw out next week. We're just finalizing some details and some changes and takeovers and things like that. But I won't dig in that too much, but we'll throw it out there. So look out for next week's video. So if you've subscribed, you'll get to see what we're going to announce next week because it'll pop up in your feed. So press that button down there, like and share, and hopefully we'll catch you next week. Cheers, guys.